try again. Okay, so there we go. So y equals 7 over x. So that one, so what you should do when you look at that is you should think the following way. That's 7 times the 1 over x graph, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right? Because that 7 on the top is the same as the 7 in the front because anything alone is over 1. To be alone is to be up top. You comfortable with that? It's the same thing. You want to know that as you move forward in math. To be a number in the top of a fraction is the same thing as to be a number in the front of a fraction because to be alone is to be over 1 is to be in the top. It's all the same thing. So you should say, well, it's really, like se it's really 7 multiplied by the 1 over x graph. Right. That's what it is. So is that 7, let me ask you, is that 7 entering into x's world? No. No, that's a y effector. He's no, no compassion there. That 7 is not entering in, feeling what x is feeling. Well, how would it look like if it entered in? It would be like this. That 7's entering in. Because what is x? He's saying, I've I got a 1 over me. I'm, a one, I'm under a 1. That's my little world. So if 7 wants to enter his world, he enters like that. See, that would be, that kind of a 7 would be a right-left effect. See the difference? Again, you don't need to know all this now. Wednesday, though, we're going to run with that. That kind of a 7. See, he would enter into x's world. So you always want to look at what, it, in all the different functions, absolute value, x squared, x cubed, square root of x, cube root of x, 1 over x, right? Those are the big 6. Think about what it means to enter into x's world. Underneath a 1, in a root, in a cube, under a third power, under a 2 power, in an absolute value. Thoughts x's world in the big 6. So if the number enters into that world, goes inside there, and in this case, under the 1, then it's an entered into X's world. It's an X kind of thing. That number's going to have a right-left effect. But if not, if it's out here, then it's a Y kind of effect. So you want to look at this 7 and go, okay, that's an up-down. It's going to do an up-down thing. It's a Y effect, or it's going to have some kind of up-down effect. And it's a multiply. It's not, an it's not 7 added or subtracted. It's times 7. So what does it mean when you take any graph and you vertically times it by 7? That's a vertical y up, down, times 7. It's going to grab it and stretch it 7 times as tall and deep. Right? It's going to vertically stretch it. So it's not a negative 7, so it's not going to flip it. It's just a positive 7. So it's a 7 times stretch, isn't it? It's going to take the norm. So you should think the normal graph is like that. And it's going to stretch it up and stretch it down, stretch it down. It's going to stretch. It's going to look kind of the same, but just be more stretched vertically. So, well, it's got to be that one. No, no, that's upside down. It doesn't have to be that one. Not, not that one. That one's, that one's been flipped, by the way. Do you see that? This part has come up. This part has come up here, and this part has come down there. That's not right. That's, that, that one's upside down. So that one's been flipped, right? It's, it's got to be this one. It's, it's B. It's not A. I don't even need to plug any points. I know it's B. I'll plug points, though, to show you. But, but you see, it's got to, if you, know, if you have the knowledge that we'll have on Wednesday, you just know right away it's B because it's not been flipped. Okay, but anyway, you don't need to know all that for now, for today. Let's just make a little XY table. What am I going to suggest you plug in? Zero and one. Zero is not going to work at all, is it? All right, you see what's going to happen? Yeah, calculator error, undefined, right? So y, y equals 7 times 1 over x. Or you can put it back the way it started. It doesn't matter. It works the same either way. 7 over x, whatever. 7 over 0, 0, that's undefined. Remember, 0 underneath is undefined, right? It's not, it's not equal to 0. It's just craziness, right? So you, you can't have, I mean, it's not a point on the graph. But that's true. None of them have points on the graph at over 0. There's an asymptote line really there. Okay, let's do 1. Y equals 7 over 1. That's just 7. So which one of them has the point over 1 up 7? That one. That was easy. We already knew it was that answer anyway. Is that making sense? How are we doing? I hope I'm not confusing. I'm kind of giving you stuff to come and yet still just using basic tables for now. Is that okay? The first row is a true statement, right? Because there is no point. Right. Yeah, I'm not saying it's a false statement. It's telling us something true. It's saying, if you try to go x over 0, no. Yeah, if x over 0, there's no point at x0, which is true. There's no, that graph does not touch 
x equals it never it never hits this x axis at x zero right exactly yep that is true all right let's okay uh, y equals cube root three okay that three so you having compassion is he entered into x's world absolutely he's in there so what is it, so what does that mean that three is a right left thing. Not an up-down thing. It's going to have a horizontal effect. It's going to have an X effect. Right? X is right, left? Right? Because he's entered into X's world. Okay. So what's he going to do? Well, he's times three. He's not three added. Remember, adding, subtracting moves the graphs. We'll get to there in a minute. This is a times three, which is going to stretch or compress horizontally. Huh? Now, here, and, and times three, what does times three always do? When you multiply by three, it's three times as big, right? But not for X. X, this is the other trick. This is fairly tricky. X affects all, at anything dealing with X has an opposite effect. X is always opposite. Y is normal. Vertical stuff, you know, vertical stuff, whatever you think, it's normal. That's right. Multiply big, divide small. X, opposite. Everything's always opposite when it comes to X effectors. So you'd think times 3 should make it 3 times wider. It'll actually compress it to be 3 times as tiny. X always does opposite. Again, not till Wednesday do you need to know all that. So we're thinking about, and, well, what, and what graph is this? Cube root? So this is the sideways snake. When I have those basic 6 on your card. The sideways snake, but it's going to be squished down to not be a very wide snake. So what does that mean? I don't know. They all kind of look somewhat decent. I'm just going to make a table. All that fancy talk, really, we just need a table. So let's plug in 0. Let's plug in 1. If we need more points, I'm just doing 0, 1 because they're easy. If I need more points, I'll do more points. Let's see. y equals cube root of 3 times 0. So that's the cube root of 0. What's the cube root of 0? zero. Yeah, that's just 0 because it asks what times itself 3 times is 0. Well, 0. Times zero, times zero, three times is zero. So that's just zero, zero. That doesn't really help. They all have zero, zero. Okay, let's plug in one. Cube root of three times one. That's the cube root of three. Are we good so far? Now, um, hmm, how should we go about that? Um, well, you guys have your calculator. It's just going to be some ugly number. Uh, do you guys have your calculator? Let me, uh, maybe I'll show you how to do that real quick. It's not going to totally help us with the graph, but, but it's valuable. So let's... Um, Let's do that. Cube root of 3. Now, do you, do you remember from your algebra days that that's the same thing as 3 to the 1 third power? Do you remember that cube roots are, are fractional powers on that? So the, the cube root is a 1 third power. So take your calculators and take 3 and do your little power button. Some calculators, it's x to the y. Some of them, it's the up arrow. And 1 divided by 3 to the one-third, and you got to put parentheses, well, unless you have the fancier calculators that show it. Um, so three to the one-third power, well, I, well, you got it. I don't need to show it all out, and I'll just tell you the answer once I've got it. Three to the one-third power, 1 1.44, blah, 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 blah. So three, three to the power of one divided by three. You all getting that on your calculators so this you know you you need to do this on a non-graphing yes i'd encourage you to bring both calculators with you to class because on the real exam remember the part one which is all these graphs this will definitely be a part one question you won't have your graphing because you can just enter that with your graphing calculator right this will be a part one where you won't have your graphing but you will have your scientific calculator so make sure you know how to do this operation on your scientific calculator three to the one-third power 1.44 not good. So yeah. this that means over. So I'm going to look at the graph here. I'm trying to make this graph. So we've got over zero zero, and then over one, up one point four. So I don't know. It's kind of like that. It's not very high. Now that means no way is this the right graph. He's over one down three. Uh uh, right? It's not that one. Yeah, that was that was not right. So, um, so there's that. Now, what you and it's not this one either. That's over. That one has over one up three. No, over one up one point 
four four. Not over one up three. That's not right. What's oh this and all I didn't know. They just left a cube root of three, didn't they? So I didn't know they didn't want a number. That's weird. I didn't see that before. Anyway, uh, but that's not right because that's negative one. Yeah. This one's you can't even tell. It's so small. But that that does say over one up cube root of three. Cube root of three, which is the one. You know, this is cube root of three, as you know. So it's it's this one. Everybody see that? That if you can see that, well, you can't really see that. But it does say over one up cube root of three. You'll see it when you do your homework. That's the answer. It's a sideways snake going through those two dots. So again, if you know the basic shape, all you really need is two dots. Notice how easy that is. That's the the strength of this approach to graphing. That if you know have the basic six memorized and you know the flips and everything, all you need is two dots. Two dots. And you can quickly get what the graph looks like. It's a sideways snake going through those two dots. So there it is. Yeah, that's the only one that even looks reasonable, huh? The other ones, I mean, just from a big picture perspective, they're all, they're all crazy. This one's going the wrong way. He's going down. It's supposed to go up to the right. That one's going, ver those two go vertical. They're not right. It's a sideways snake, so it had to be one of those two. And it's a sideways snake that goes from low to high. Low to high. So it had to be D, huh? We don't even need to look at the nitty-gritty details. We good? We okay? We got to talk about this. We got 15 minutes. I'll do the best I can. Sorry, I should get here quicker. Piecewise. All right. I know people don't like these either. Um, they're graphs in pieces. Let me show you. All right. Yeah. All right. So we got those basic ones. I'm all getting you ready for 2.6, but we got to get through today. Okay. So this is Y. F is Y. All right. These are this whole section. This is what it's about, really, is piecewise functions. What does that mean? That means graphs that are in various pieces. Let me help you with this. Look at what it says here. It's going to give you basically three equations in three different zones. That means you use x squared when x is less than 0. This is the x-axis. Here's 0. Here's 1. Here's 2. Here's 3. Here's negative 1. Here's negative 2, right? So when x is less than 0, use x squared. Meaning in this section here, here's 0. So, so I'll put a line right here. In this section here, Use y equals x squared. When x is right on 0, right on that thin line in the middle, it's just at a height of 1. Let me just do that right now. Boom. There we go. At a height of 1. Nothing more to it. y is 1 when x is 0. Over 0, up is over 0, up 1. x is 0, y is 1. So I got that dot in the middle. I'm going to have to do some table work for the left side and the right side. But for the middle, it's just one dot. Why? Because it's only one spot. X is zero, right in the middle. See what it says there? When X is zero, Y is one. And for the right side, when X is greater than zero, when you're over here, greater than zero, you're the equation 3X plus 3. So when you're less than zero, X less than zero, this is X greater than zero, and right in the middle, you're on equal zero. Everybody see that? It's zones in the x-axis. It's pieces. We're going to put together three equations in pieces. That's what this whole rest of the section is about. It's really easy to do if you just realize, just get the sections down and then just plug into a table. So I'm going to say, okay, y equals x squared. I'm going to make that table over here on the left. So I'm going to use y equals x squared. And when I make a little table, I'm only going to plug in x values that are in this zone, right? Um, that's what it's saying up here. It's saying use, use y is x squared for x values less than 0. Okay, so I'm supposed to put x values less than 0, but I'm actually going to put 0 itself as well. Why? Because it gets infinitesimally close to 0. So I really need to see what it's doing right at 0, even though it'll be an open dot there. Did you catch all that I just said there? Super important. Here's the mistake students make. Students who are doing pretty, pretty well and pretty much get it, there's one little thing that gets them. And they look at this and go, x less than 0. So that's like negative 1, negative 2, numbers less than 0. True, true. But we have to also do 0 itself. You go, no, no, but it's just less. It's not equal to 0, Ms. Taren. I know, I know. It'll be an open dot there. It doesn't quite hit 0. But you, you can't skip the whole world between negative 1 and 0. There's still stuff there, like at negative 1 half, negative 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0
right? So, so really, effectively, you've got to plug in zero because it gets infinitesimally close to zero, even though technically it never equals zero. It's just less than zero. You still have to check zero. It's going to be an open dot, though. Does that make sense? So I make a table. I put in zero, and I circle the entry in my table. It's my little way of letting myself, helping myself remember, put an open dot there when you put that dot on the graph. So if I plug in zero to y equals x squared, that's pretty easy. You get zero. So that means at zero, zero, there's an open dot. Does that make sense? At zero, zero, there's an open dot. It gets infinitesimally close to that spot, but doesn't quite hit it. Is that okay? And then negative 1, negative 1 squared, that's just positive 1, huh? So back 1, up 1, right here, and that's a solid dot. And so I'm going to draw an x squared kind of graph. What's an x squared kind of graph? U shape, right? From this open dot to this solid dot. All I need is two points. If I know the basic shape, it's going to go like that. Kind of shaky graph there. There, There's that piece. Everybody good so far? And there's a solid dot right here, isn't there? Because of what it said in the middle. So when x is 0 right on, it's at height 1. y is 1 when x is right on 0. So that's a solid dot right there. Good. And now let's do the right side. What happens on the right side? We plug into this equation for values x greater than 0. But again, greater than 0. I really got to do 0 itself. Don't start at 1. Do, do 1. Do 0 and 1. But don't just skip 0. Don't skip 0. You got to do zero you, and circle it because it's going to be an open dot there, but it does get infinitesimally close to zero, even though it doesn't equal zero. You guys hearing me on that? That's the mistake a lot of people make. Okay, so plug in zero to this function, plug in zero, what do you get? Three times zero plus three, it's just three. And then plug in one, three times one plus three, is that six? So over zero up three, two, three right here, open dot at over zero up three. And then over 1 up 6, I'm going to run out of room. It's way up here, right? Over 1 up 6. And, it's, and what, kind of, what kind of graph is that? I got these two dots. I got this open dot right here and this solid dot right here. I got to connect them up with some kind of graph to the right. It's the graph y equals 3x plus 3. What does 3x plus 3 look like? Straight line, right? That's just a straight line. So connect a straight line. It's going off to the right forever. Keep moving my arrow. And there's the graph. So this arrow left forever, this arrow right forever. Two open dots in the middle and one solid dot. There it is. We pieced together two functions and a dot in the middle. Everybody see that? You see how I know what to use where? I did. These are the instructions. When x is less than 0, use this. When x is right on 0, it's just at a height of 1. When x is greater than 0, there's the height. Use that. Right? Because that's what y equals in different x zones. That making sense? Let's try another one, huh? This cake. Let, let me, let's do it. Yeah, I didn't even notice. There, there. I wasn't even reading their question. Thanks. I'm glad you guys are keeping me account. I'm just thinking about the test. Getting you ready for that. F of negative 1. Yeah, so, so yeah, they're just, yeah, you will do graphs. You need all that I just showed you. But uh, let's, they're just doing easy stuff right now, warming us up. So f of negative 1, yeah, so what? that's an x value. So, you, well, how do you know which of these you plug into? You read the directions. It says if x is a value less than 0, which it is, then plug into that. So I'm going to plug into x squared. So it's positive 1. Whoops, positive 1. But then for the next part, f of 0, so, so these, are, these are the x values. When x is 0... Which function am I going to plug into? Just the, one. just the 1. So you just write 1. There's no place to plug in the x value at all. It's just 1. Y or f is just 1. Period. And now for the third part, f of 2, the x value is 2. The x value is greater than 0. You plug into that function. 3x plus 3. Plug in the 2. 6 plus 3, 9. Good. So they're just making sure you can read those kind of statements. They're just getting your feet wet. I kind of jumped all the way to the conclusion. But they're just getting you warmed up. They're just saying, hey, can you tell? You're supposed to plug into certain functions at certain times. That's all they're doing there. So that'll be easy now. Is that okay? So that's really all you need to do on number nine. All right, let's do this one. All right, so there we go. So it's in three pieces. 
some three pieces. Yeah, so, so here's how you start. Draw, draw a big graph. I'm not going to go through all their silly questions. Um, really, if you get the graph, all the questions are easy. The, it's, it, the graph is, and that's on the test, I'll just say, hey, which graph is right? Which graph is right? So let's just get the graph. And then I'll, then I'll go back and say, see, here's the domain. Domain, once you have a picture, you can see the domain's just the width, right? And the intercepts will be easy, and range will be, all the rest will be easy. Let's just get the graph. All right, so when you go to the graph, the main thing on a piecewise graph, on a graph that's in these, like, separate pieces like this, is to start with the X zones and break your graph up into those various X zones. What are they? The first one's between negative 3 and 1, so let's, let's do that. So there's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So from here to here, that's the first zone, huh? Negative 3 to 1. So notice, this one does not break at 0. That's particularly why I wanted to show you this one example. They don't all break right in the middle at 0, at the y-axis. This one does not. That was just a coincidence the other one did. A lot of them do, but not this one. Okay, the, and then at x equals 1... He's at 8. I can just put that value right now. Boom. Over 1, up 8, right? When x is 1, y, f, y, is 8. Period. That's just a dot. Over 1, up 8. x is 1, y is 8. And then for x greater than 1, so that would be here. This is x greater than 1. This is x between oops, there, right? x greater than 1. He's the function negative 2x plus 6. Over here, x less than 1, he's the function 2x plus 7. Everybody see how I basically broke, out, broke down the landscape? Does that make sense, those three different sections? So we got the dot in the middle. When x equals 1, it's at 8. When x is over here between negative 3 and positive 3, it's that function. Greater than 1, it's that function. That's what they're saying. Does that make sense now? we got a couple minutes. Can you get two dots? So get two dots in the left, connect them and make a line, right? These are both lines. No, nobody, there's no x squareds here, right? There's no x squareds, there's no u-shapes. Those are both straight lines. So go over here to the left and get two dots. Go over here to the right and get two dots. Now when I say left, I mean left of 1. 1's my middle this time, not 0. 1's my middle, isn't it? So go left of 1. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to make an xy table. This is for y equals 2x plus 7, the function on the left. And I'm going to plug in x values. What x values? In this zone, from 1 on back to negative 3. Right? Let me stop for just a second. Are you catching that? Are you seeing that's the fundamental issue is the zone. I'm looking. It says use this function when you have x values between negative 3 and 1. Now, one, it, it's not equal to 1, though. Notice it's not equal to 1, but I still use it. Remember, it's infinitesimally close, but it'll be an open dot. You've got to use 1 still. And then any other dot you want, I'll just do 0. Right? I'm just using 1 and 0. But, and just plug in 1. 2 times 1 plus 7, 9. Plug in 0. 2 times 0 plus 7, 7. Right? So over 1, up, not up. Oh, is it 9? Yeah, over 1, up 9. That means it's an open dot right above this one. There's over 1, up 9. Here's over 1, up 8, solid dot. And then over 0, up 7, be about right there. Connect the dots. There they go. Let me, let me do the right side and we'll be done. So then the right side, plug in values greater than 1, which means I'm going to have to do 1 itself and 2, but circle 1. Plug in 1, you get negative 2 times 1 plus 6, 4. Plug in 2, negative 4 plus 6, 2. Over 1, up 4. Open dot. And over 2, up 2. Solid dot. Does that make sense? Oh, I got those points? Because it's greater than 1. So the 1 
doesn't really hit it right on. That makes sense? Everybody see that? All right. Sorry, I should have got quicker to that. We'll stop there.